Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my dad, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking? How's life from glorious Naples, Florida? You know, Ryan, it uh, couldn't be better, and I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to the roaring 20s. It's not going to be a new decade. It's a roaring 20s. That we're coming into. I just hope they don't bring back those flapper dresses. You know what, Bob? Yeah, I can't see you wearing a flapper dress, for the record. No, You're very no. disturbed. No, your actually. mom. Actually, you're talking about your mom, actually. Right? <laughs> <laughs> then it really be a new decade. A lot of new things going on. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. In our first segment today, we're going to talk about things that are overrated that you don't really need to be focusing on when it comes to your financial world. And then the second segment today, we're going to talk about what's underrated, things that you don't give enough attention to when it comes to your financial life. So we're going to break that all down for you on the show this morning. Along with this week's financial propaganda, we're going to talk about what type of news the financial media has been broadcasting that you need to avoid at all costs. And on this week's Spotlight, where we actually break down a real financial plan for you. We have the other Payne, Bob's son, my brother, Chris Payne, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management on the show. So we've got a great show for you this morning. So let's hop to it. You know, Bob, to kick it off, let's talk about things in the financial world that tend to be overhyped that you probably should have less focus on when it comes to building your wealth plan. And a big one is rates of return. You know, why is it dangerous to put too much emphasis on your return when it comes to your financial plan? Well, wait a minute, Ryan. I'm still basking in the sunlight of 2019's returns. I mean, can I just have that for another couple of minutes? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. 2019 is coming gone, and last year was a phenomenal year for most asset classes if you were invested. But we have to be realistic. You're not going to get a 30% return in the stock market every single year. It's just not realistic. And with those big returns, a lot of times comes big downside when the market actually goes down. Well, that's the one thing that drives me nuts. When you know you get on CNBC or you're on Fox Business, and they say, so, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, <laughs> what did last year's returns tell you? What's the market saying to you right now? Yeah, right. It's like, uh, well, why don't we just uh, – I'll, I'll rub the magic eight ball and I'll tell you because nobody really knows, right? I mean, it's your yeah. guess is as good as mine. I mean, look at December of 2018, right? We're just going back a year, a year and a month ago. The S&P was down 14% for the quarter, and it ended up down 4.5% for the year. And then 2019 turns around and we're up over 30% plus. So there's no rhyme or reason or consistency to it. And if you get focused on the rate of return, you're focused on the wrong thing. That's right. Because the two main things you need to focus on are number one, risk, because it's not really what you make on the upside. And I always tell this to clients. It's really when you protect yourself on the downside. And if you're getting close to retirement or you're tired now, you know, not losing on the downside is so much more important than capturing that upside. The second thing is, Bob, is your returns need to be correlated to what your goals are, not what the S&P 500 did last year. That's brilliant, right? It's all about, you know, having the confidence to stay invested, you know, have the temerity, you know, to, to ignore the financial propaganda and, you know, not fall to fear because that's what happened, right? The end of December of 2018, a lot of people gave in to fear. You know, almost a trillion dollars came out of the stock market last year, went into bonds. Uh, because they were afraid of a recession. Yeah, exactly right. And if you invest your money properly, it's never about if we're going to go into a recession or not. That shouldn't even be on your horizon. It should really be about, I want to retire at this age. I'm retired now. I need this much income. So I need my portfolio to be invested like this. That's goal-based. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's right. so true, right? When you look at your December statement, it says, oh, look how much money I made. It was really easy. Well, it's not easy. Right. You got to deal with your emotions all the time. You need a plan. You need a strategy. We call it A to B. Everybody should have a customized A to B goal based approach to investing. That's how you win in the markets. Yeah, exactly right. And the other thing that we see a lot of emphasis on that shouldn't be is cost versus value. 
right? Uh, Bob, you're famous for saying, you know, some of us know the cost of everything, the value of nothing. And when it comes to your portfolio, what you're paying in fees should correlate to the value you're getting, not just the overall cost. You know, Ryan, I heard an old Bobism the other day. In the absence of value, price is always going to be a consideration. That's you know, right. if you don't feel like you're getting value for the advice or for the, the help that you're getting, well, then you're probably right. But the fact of the matter is, great advice is what made the difference between having a successful experience in the last 10 years or being in cash, you know, hoping and praying things will work out. Well, there's two extremes here. I mean, we look at number one, we'll come in, we'll analyze your portfolio and we'll find out you're paying a lot of fees you don't know you're paying because they're hidden. But the sad part is no one's giving you advice. So you're overpaying for zero advice. Like I had some come in here and shocked that we actually do financial planning. I'm like, man, you're paying the fees for it now. You just don't see it. Well, that's the big difference, right? The big difference is having a true financial planner who's a fiduciary, who does financial planning, right? If you don't have a plan, if you don't have a projection of what you're going to be worth every year for the rest of your life, you probably have a salesman, right? Right? You have somebody who's selling you investments as opposed to building a plan based on your total life experience. Right. And the cruel part about that is you're paying for someone to actually be giving you advice and you're not getting that advice. That's the one extreme. The other extreme is, hey, I want to put my money into lowest cost investments. I don't want to pay anything. Well, what comes along with that is no advice. And doing it yourself a lot of times might feel great because you're not paying a lot in fees, but you might be putting yourself at a lot of risk because no one's advising you to, number one, maybe stay in the market when everyone's saying get out or vice versa, taking risk off the table when you should be and you don't know to do that. Well, you know, Rod, when I ask people, you know, how much would you like to pay? What do you think they normally say? Well, obviously, but I like to pay nothing and get all the advice for free. That's the best option. Well, here's the best answer. What do you expect to get for that? <laughs> right. And typically, you end up getting what you pay for in that case. Nothing. Well, that's the big difference. And that's why I see there, there still is a big uh, dichotomy in, our, in the world of investment planning and investment advice. You have people that are product-based, commission-based. And you have people that are fiduciaries who are going to do what's in your best interest. You know, it's kind of like going to buy a car, right? If you if you go to a Ford dealer, they're not going to sell you a Tesla. <laughs> that's, that's a shame because uh, I love that Tesla, but I don't like the Tesla prices. Well, the other thing is, you know, if you go to Fidelity, they're not going to let you buy and invest in a Vanguard product. They're going to sell you the product that their firm manufactures. So if you look at these big wirehouses and banks and and, you know, companies, they're basically like manufacturers, right? They manufacture a product and then you work with a stockbroker or a salesman who sells you that product. That's not planning and that's not investing, really. That's, that's just, you know, that's just somebody pushing product down your throat on a daily basis. Yeah. So the question you need to ask yourself, Darton, into the roaring 20s here is, number one, what am I paying? If I'm paying a lot, am I getting advice for what I'm actually paying for? Or on the other side, am I paying very little, but am I not getting the advice I need to make sure that I get to my goals with the least amount of risk and the highest certainty? And if you're thinking right now, I need to find these things out. These are things I need to know going into 2020. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $500,000 safe for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you, our now famous total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the whole picture for you. All you need to do is bring in those statements from December, bring them in the office. We're going to take all the data from those statements and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal. And we're going to take a look at your entire net worth at a bird's eye view and look at all the critical components from a financial planning perspective. So we're going to look at fees. Is there a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio? You don't know you're paying and not getting any advice for all the fees that these advisors are taking from you. We're going to break down all the fees in your portfolio, show you how to reduce fees so there's more money in your pocket. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan for retirement? Bob and I are going to show you where your income gap is, show you how to optimize, increase the income on your portfolio so you have an income stream for life. And we're going to look at diversification. If the market goes down big tomorrow, are you protected? What does the downside look like? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844 844 
844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next 10 callers, you've saved over $500,000 for your retirement. Brian and I will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. There's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Hey, this is Bob Payne and I'm hanging out with my son today, Rye Payne, because we're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, as always, want to give you the most common sense, practical advice you can possibly have going into 2020. That's why we came out with our newest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts and save on taxes in 2020. We also give you the highlights of the new Secure Act. There's a lot of things in the new Secure Act that you can do to save on taxes. You want to know that information and you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B U L L I S H, to 555 888. That's the word bullish, to 555 888. Five ways to maximize your retirement accounts in 2020 and the highlights from the new Secure Act. Check it out. You can get all the new tax benefits that are available to you that you can optimize and you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. So, Bob, I thought we could switch gears this segment and discuss some of the things in your financial life that you need to pay more attention to, not less. And I think a big one, and this is a big rule of thumb here at Payne Capital Management, is the closer you are to retirement and when you're retired, liquidity, or what I would call access to your money, becomes more and more important. Hey, Ryan, this here's the fact of the matter. You and I have over 70 years combined investment experience of investing in different things and helping people to achieve their goals. And of course, we've never made a mistake in those 70 years, have we? <laughs> yeah, in those 70 years, uh, I definitely have the scars on my back to say, yes, we made some mistakes, Bob. <laughs> of course we have. And you know what? The thing is, you got to, you know, I always say it's okay to be wrong. It's not okay to stay wrong. But the problem when you don't have proper liquidity in your portfolio, you have investments that are illiquid, you don't have the opportunity to change them. You're stuck. And nobody likes to be stuck with a mistake because every time you pick up your statement, it tells you you made a mistake. <laughs> you don't want to be reminded about that. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen a lot of things in the last couple of years that are really risky investments because you can't get access to your principal. A lot of these non-traded real estate investment trusts that a lot of the brokerage mm. firms have sold, uh, they yep. post them on the statement at the same value, but really they went down in value big time. And you could lose a lot of principal on these things and not even know it. And that's like such a dangerous place to be when you need access to your money, especially in retirement. Oh, you're, yeah, you're so right, Rod. Whether it's a non-traded read or an annuity or some kind of a limited partnership investment or private equity deal, you know, just walk away from those things. Because what can happen? What's, what's the realism of life, right? You're going to have emergencies, right? And if you have an emergency, you need liquidity, right? And so if you have a health care emergency, a family emergency, you have a real, you know, you have a deal you want to do. You want to get your money. You don't want to have to be told by someone you can't get your money. 
Yeah, that's a, and that's why we always we do make fun of annuities. We can't help ourselves, Bob. We just we just don't like annuities. Uh, depending on the situation, of course. But the problem is, you get these great pitchers, income for life. Like who doesn't want income for life? Sounds like a fantastic deal. The problem is with an annuity to get something, you always give something up. So you get this income for life, but now you've given up your principal. And to me, that's like I would never want to give up my principal in retirement. That just seems crazy. No, it, it is. And it's, and you know, the other big problem, right? A lot of these investments aren't even viewed as safe by the banking industry. So you can't even borrow against them. I mean, if you, if you're in a situation where you have an emergency, you're absolutely stuck. So let's stay away from those. Let's run away from those things. And, you know, let's talk about some other things that are underrated. Yes. Be liquid in retirement. But the other thing is predictability. And last time I checked, what the market's going to do year by year is not very predictable. And I would hate to have my retirement plan based on what the market's going to do in any given year. Yeah, I mean, we want predictability of total return, but the most important part of your portfolio where you need predictability is your income. Yes, exactly. And that's one of the things you have to start thinking about. When you get close to retirement, like 10 years out, and you're retired, you want to go from what we call a wealth accumulation portfolio to a wealth distribution portfolio. And wealth distribution is all about having predictability. And to your point, Bob, that's having a nice income stream that comes in every single year, regardless of what the market's doing. You know, Rye, retirement is wonderful, but it's expensive. And you need that income to come in because I went to lunch the other day and you know what the waiter told me? You can't pay for lunch with relative performance. You need to have money. <laughs> Well, yeah, and it's like right now we look at a lot of portfolios. When your portfolios come in and we analyze them is you might have done great in the market last year. Maybe you're up 30%. You own stocks like Apple and Microsoft, but these stocks don't pay dividends or very little dividends. That's not very reliable because in any given year, these stocks can do very poorly too. That's the other side of the coin. You know, I just had this discussion with a great client yesterday. And he said, you know, I, hey, I really feel like, the, you know, the Googles and the tech stocks, which have been the, the monster performers of the last decade, are going to keep going up. But he says, Bob, I need income. And I just, you know, sold some real estate. I got a bunch of money. And what we focused on were dividends. We focused on interest. We didn't sell the growth stocks. Hey, let them run. I hope they go. I hope they go up 100 fold. But you want to make sure you have part of your portfolio. It's going to help you pay your bills. Yeah, because here's the mistake you make in retirement. It's like you can afford all the upside of the market, right? We can all afford for our portfolio to go up endlessly, but you can't afford to see your portfolio go down by 40, 50% in any given year. That can ruin your whole retirement. So what you have to be do is you have to be willing to give up some of that upside for more reliability over time because you just don't want to change your lifestyle in retirement. That's the worst thing that could happen to you. Yeah, the worst thing you say is, Oh, look how well my growth stocks are doing. I don't need anything else. Let me get rid of all that other stuff that just pays those little dividends and interest and move over there. Biggest mistake you can make. It's happened in every cycle, right? It's going to happen again. Yeah, don't make that mistake. And the last thing, Bob, that's so underrated and that you and I focus so much time on when we build portfolios is tax efficiency or tax advantages because it's not what you make. It's what you take. <laughs> I like that. And that's a new Ryeism. Not I mean, what you make, it's what you take. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, I, I agree. I mean, look, we've got to pay taxes eventually, but you know, you can be smart about them. That's why you want to have a strategy, not just for how do you invest your money, but how your returns are achieved. Um, if you use tax inefficient investments like mutual funds, you pay taxes. You can be paying taxes on April 15th to the IRS. That, that's money that should be in your portfolio compound and creating more wealth for you and your family. Yeah, you, and that's the thing. We don't we don't like mutual funds. We talk about that a lot. It's because the last two years, even the market was down in 2018, they still paid out big capital gains that you had to pay, even though you didn't make any money. And even this past year, they had to pay out their capital gains at the end of the year. You still had to pay taxes on their terms, not your terms. So having control over taxes and optimizing for taxes is huge. And most of us just aren't doing that. You know, that's the thing. It's, it's not that you're anti-mutual funds. It's just that that's old school investing. You know, they're, they're really for the small thousand dollar investor. I mean, everybody today can, can afford to use what the wealth, wealthy have always used, which are really smart, passive tax advantageous investments. And um, those strategies are available to everyone. And, it's, and just shocks me, right? Every week after week, you're not utilizing these strategies that have made the wealthy wealthy and helped them maintain their wealth all through the last couple hundred years. Yeah, so this year when you're going through your portfolio, liquidity, predictability, and optimize those taxes.
Hey, if you're thinking to yourself right now, you know, I need simplicity in my life. I need a tax advantageous, predictable strategy that gives me the liquidity I need in the case of any of my family emergencies. Well, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved over 500000 for retirement, Ryan and I are going to create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a financial GPS, just like the GPS you have in your car, which will tell you exactly where you are right now financially and more importantly, where you're going. And we'll report daily or minute by minute on your progress of your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid the financial potholes and dead ends that you get with these typical cookie cutter financial plans on the internet or from your stockbroker. You know, it's gonna update your net worth daily in real time so that you'll always know where you are and where you're going. More importantly, we'll take all those statements, all that collection of investments and make sense out of it. We're gonna break it down to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you truly diversified? You know, I think Ryan and I should start a game show. Are you diversified? Well, diversification is the only free lunch on Wall Street. Hey, let's grab that free lunch. It's all for you. Fees, costs. You know, we know we all want to be wholesale today. Nobody plays retail anymore. The only people that pay retail are you. You're stuck with the, the old retail investments that are overcharging you. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing worse in life than being overcharged, especially by your own portfolio. And income, well, I'll tell you, we are looking for dependable, repeatable income streams all the time. It's what you need in retirement. And if you're retired right now, your number one goal is to stay retired. And that requires dependable, repeatable income from dividends and interest and other investments. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we'll answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, to your point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $500,000 saved for retirement. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news, and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, you and I have been sending articles back and forth all week. What articles did you find out there were just so offensive that you had to talk about it here on our financial propaganda segment? Well, Ryan, I'm starting to roaring 20s off on a different foot. I'm, more, I'm focused on a very positive article which uh, I thought was very instructive and basically just talked about the last two years as being an outstanding time for any investor to learn how to be a successful investor and really just, you know, understand how markets operate and, you know, respect the fact that you need to have the temerity to hang on when others, you know, are losing their heads and succumbing to fear. You know, this yes. year we had almost a bear market, you know, in 2018, right near the end of the year, right? We had markets down almost 20%. How long did it take for that to recover, bud? Not long at all, only a couple months. But you know, we forget, right, you look at 2018 and 2019, 2019 being a phenomenal year. But 2018, you had that huge decline at the end of the year. And in retrospect, it's always easy to say, yeah, it was easy to be invested. But when you're actually going through it, it's a lot harder to keep your money invested through that kind of volatility. A week. Sure, so and you know it did recover scour. within two months. Daily what percentage of the any, any decline of uh, return within two months? Right? What percentage of declines return within two months? Recover within two months. 
what percentage? Oh, so meaning any yeah. time the market goes down, it's back and forth. Yeah, what percentage of those declined? What articles did you find out there were just so? I'd say 50% on our financial 50%, right segments. on the money. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, good. Hey. So, you know, if you understand that, right, you're not going to, you'll be a little smarter in terms of how you invest in the market because, as I always say, markets climb a wall of worry. And we had a lot to worry about last year. And yeah, you might not admit it right now. But a lot of you did panic. You know, you panicked with the inverted yield curve. You panicked with the prediction of recession. You panicked because Jupiter was going to hit Mars. Um, we had a lot of bad news last year, and a lot of people acted on that news, right? Well, I mean, let's let's be real here, Bob. Um, the media created a lot of bad news, and they ignored a lot of good news. I know, you know, on our show, we did talk about a lot of the positive things going on, and I would say even into this year, with unemployment being so low, the economy being a lot stronger than I would say the media led, led you to believe. So I think a lot of it is this fear mongering, which is not exactly true, but the media does a great job of putting us into panic mode. It's incredible how they do that time and time again, hence our financial propaganda segment every single week. Yeah, Ryan, you're right. You're so right about that. And, um, you know, and here's the lesson I think I can take from this article. When you, when you read those headlines that strike fear in the hearts of mere mortals, you know, just remember 2019, right? Remember the overhyped concerns and pessimism that was constantly promoted in the news? Yeah, sit back and smile a little bit, knowing that doing nothing with the intent and purpose is, in fact, doing something. That's a right way to be a successful long-term investor. Well said, Bob. It's true. It's sometimes it's just, you know, you don't have to make moves to feel like to be actually productive, which also brings me to another thing to think about, and I think this is more along the positive side, but statistically speaking, this is crazy. Since 1990, the entire added value of owning stocks over putting your money into treasury bills, which are a very safe investment, came down to globally just 1.3% of stocks. So that means if you didn't have that 1.3% of stocks and you had all other 98% of stocks, you would have just been better off sitting in bonds as opposed to owning the market. So how do why do people still think they can beat the market? You have to be so right, it's actually crazy. Well, you know, I, I experienced this back in the 90s. Uh, there was a big winning stock in the 90s, right, called Cisco. And it was, um, you know, it's kind of like the Apple of 2019. It always went up. And whenever I would sit down with someone new and they'd say, well, I'm really good at this. I own Cisco. And I said, that's great. I miss Cisco. What's the next one? Did I tell you I own Cisco? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think right now, this is something to think about in your own personal portfolios. Number one, do you own individual stocks? Are you trying to wing it on your own and think, I can beat the professionals? Well, first off, the professionals don't beat the market because it's too hard. <laughs> and we just talked about this last segment. Why do I still own mutual funds? It's, it's something like 90% of mutual fund managers have underperformed the underlying index over the last 10 years. So when you're looking at your portfolio and reevaluating this year, you probably have to start questioning these things because the reality of it is, I don't care what your broker says, these mutual funds, you're paying more money to underperform over time. It's crazy. Hey, Rye, who do you think? You think people are buying more Apple now when it's at 315 or back when I met Steve Jobs and he had been fired from Apple and the stock was traded at six. You think more people <laughs> were buying it at six or more people were buying it at 315? Oh, absolutely right now, right? I mean, it's it's like just buy or buy the S&P 500. Well, the problem is if you're buying the S&P 500 only, it's basically all the big tech names. It's 30% tech. You're just buying a tech fund, which is great when that stuff goes up. But as we know, Bob, there's another side of that coin. Again, when the tide goes out, you can, be, you can see who's been swimming naked. And right now, it's more important than ever. And this is why you want to make sure you're diversified. And again... I'm not sure you want to own some of these professional managers who invariably underperform. Get rid of those mutual funds. They're not a great deal. Well, after a phenomenal decade of returns in stock market, still 80% of all mutual fund managers underperform their underlying index. So, you know, they, they can't do it in bad markets. They can't do it in good markets. Be smart and don't invest with professional money managers. So, Rob, if I'm hearing you correctly, you would believe in simplicity over complexity, and you believe in being optimistic over being pessimistic. That pretty much sums it up. Um, and I think the thing is, or the dirty little secret of the media is, 
they always skew a little bit negative, and even Wall Street does, and negativity actually doesn't pay off. And you've said this before. It sounds really smart to be negative and say, like, all these bad things are going to happen, but that's not the winning strategy. Actually, being a little more optimistic tends to do better because surprises tend to be, for the most part, in the positive, not the negative, even though we want to believe that it's, you know, someone's out there to find that next black swan event or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing when you, when you think about the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed over 29,000 this, this week uh, for an all-time record high. And if you go back over your lifetime, I don't care if it's me or, or you or your grandparents, the market was never a better opportunity to invest in than when the day you were born. So it never goes back to where it was. It always goes higher. Unbelievable, the pessimists get all the attention through the media, and that's why financial propaganda should be avoided at all cost. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a plan based on my goals, not what the prognosticators and strategists think are going to happen this year, but a game plan that's based on what I need to live on. And I want to do it with the most tax efficiency. I want to do it with the least amount of fees, highest probabilities of success. Here's your shot to do it. We still have six slots left. If you're one of the next six callers, you have over $500,000 saved for retirement, Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic financial review where we look at the big picture. All you need to do is bring in those statements from December. We'll take all that information, and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you can view your entire net worth at a bird's eye view, and we can start to look at all the critical components to your portfolio, everything from fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio you don't know you're paying from those high-cost mutual funds, real estate investment trusts, annuities, insurance products. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, show how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Is your money heavily concentrated or one or two areas? A lot of these tech names, if the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected we're going to show you exactly how safe your portfolio really is and show you how to protect and bulletproof it for retirement. And lastly, we're going to look at income and taxes. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invested. An income stream is much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize the income and taxes on your portfolio to give you a stream of income you cannot live. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can simply just call 844-PLAN-NYC. 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of the next six callers, you've saved over 500000 for your retirement. Brian and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, there's no obligation. And there's no cost. There's no strings attached. There's no plan unless you text or call right now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Don't miss out. All you have to do is call 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 844-P-L-A-N-N-Y-C. Hey, this is Bob Payne, and I'm with my son, my oldest son. You get to hear the other one soon. Uh, Rye Payne, and we're the Paynes of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I, as you know, are simple men, so we want to keep it simple for you, and that's why we put together our latest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts, save on taxes in 2020. We also give you all the highlights of the new SECURE Act. This is one of the most transformational new rules about taxes that you need to know so you can maximize taxes in 2020. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, spelled B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's five ways to maximize your retirement accounts in 2020. And we give you all the highlights of the new tax reform, the SECURE Act, so you can know all the new things that you can do this year to optimize your taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. 
simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can actually check out old episodes of the show in podcast form. You can subscribe to the show. You can learn more about our firm, Payne Capital Management, and that's spelled P-A-Y-N-E for the record. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but you need to check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com and you can see that. Uh, you can catch myself, other advisors at Payne Capital Management, on all the major networks every single week from Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, talking about our latest thoughts on the economy and the market. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob directly, you can email us directly at questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us with questions today, we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving. Dan, what's shaking, my brother? Hello, Ryan and Bob. I'm doing well. I'm trying to figure out who the matchup is going to be for the Super Bowl this year. I initially thought it was going to be Bob's Eagles versus my Patriots again, maybe, but Ooh. that didn't come to be. And then the Ravens totally botched their playoff game. So I don't know. I don't know who to root for. Well, Dan, now you know why I invest in the stock market. I don't bet on football games. <laughs> 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 it's a much better way to invest your money for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. More certainty. Yeah, more certainty. Yeah. Well, we got some great questions on the mailbag today. Our first one comes to us from Montclair, New Jersey, and it's John in Montclair. John says, Bob, I'm 67, so I've reached full retirement age for Social Security, but I don't have plans to retire anytime soon. Should I go ahead and start my Social Security now or just wait until I'm done working? You know, Ryan, if I called John right now and I'd ask him two questions, uh, you know, is sooner better than later or is more better than less, right? Because he takes it now, it's sooner than taking right. it later. And of course, according to the Social Security rules, you get an 8% bump every year if you wait until you know, you're 70. So in the case of John, what do you think? Is sooner better than later or is more better than less? Well, here's a question you have to ask yourself. Yes, you get more later. The caveat there is typically, and it depends on your specific situation, it takes you to almost age 80 to make up the difference for not taking it for that year window in this case and the case for John. So, you know, that's the other thing. How lucky do you feel? Because if you think you're going to live to 100, then maybe, yeah, it is worth taking it later. But if you don't, you still might be better off taking it earlier because, again, it's going to take you a long time to make up that difference. So you're going to pull a Clint Eastwood on this guy, John, and ask him, hey, do you feel lucky? Is that the deal? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, there's also a lot of fear around Social Security running out of money, right? Uh, would that be a motivation for John to take it earlier rather than wait? Well, the one thing we can probably bet the house on is benefits probably going to be less, not more in the future. Like I think by the time I am eligible for social security, I have to be about like 95 years old. So yeah, there is something <laughs> said about they're going to give the benefit now, maybe take it because there's no tax penalties to take that money when you're at full retirement, which could be 66, 67. So a lot of times, Bob, and again, it depends on your situation, might be better to take it early. Well, as you always tell me, Ryan, there's at least a gazillion different ways to claim your Social Security. So one of the things that we'd want to do when we meet with John is find out, you know, what's his spouse's benefits look like? And, you know, is she retired? You know, there, there are different strategies you can use to play off of each spouse. And a lot of things that you don't know is why you need advice on on how to take Social Security. Yeah, I think to sum that up, there's no hard, fast rule, and it's going to depend on those other variables. And that's why you want to take your Social Security in concert with your entire financial plan. Hey, Ryan, by the way, I got a uh, I got an increase on my Social Security check this year. Well, lunch is on you when I see you in Naples there, Bob. But so. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then your mom told me that all our, our Medicare expenses went up, so it, it kind of uh, was moot. So oh, okay. even I was out. excited for about three seconds. We'll split lunch. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. All right. Well, before you go off to lunch, hopefully you can answer this next question from Eric in Scarsdale, New York. Eric says, Ryan, I'm a big believer in my current company's future, so the majority of my 401k is invested in company stock. I understand that I'm not diversified, but isn't that okay since I know the company so well? Oh my God, that's a bad decision. Oof. I'm going to cry, Bob. Uh, I'm, so, I'm going to get never, emotional. Never, 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 yeah. Eric, never. Nope. Never. Um, and Bob and I, we are literally crash test dummies for this. Uh, we both come from Merrill Lynch, which was a great company for over 90 years. And I was at the company when they had the big credit crisis. 
And all of a sudden, all my options that were locked away basically went to zero. But here's the thing. I was working in that company. I was right next to the tower where they were leveraging up these mortgages and doing all these things back in 2007. No one called me to let me know that the company was having problems. So I don't care how well you know the company, Bob, you and I know, doesn't matter. Every stock can go to zero. Bad strategy. Wait a minute, Ry. You sat right outside the door of Stan O'Neill, the CEO of Merrill Lynch, and he didn't come out and tell you that the balance sheet was leveraged 35 to 1 and that they were <laughs> overloaded in subprime debt and were, yeah. were, had a negative net worth. They didn't tell you? Worse, you know, the, the management was telling you buy more stock when it was going down, and, and they didn't even know. That's the problem. So I don't care how well you think you know a company. Like I've had, I had a new client come in here, owned a lot of money of a big blue chip company, uh, Procter & Gamble. And, you know, he hadn't worked for the company in 15 years, but he said, well, a lot of the guys I worked with are still there. They keep me on the pulse of the stock. Uh, and of course, half is net worth within the stock. I said, I don't care. There's no way you can know. That's, that's BS. I'll call BS on that. Yeah, you can't know. You don't. You can't know if Procter and Gamble's, uh, which is a great American institution, is going to end up being like Merrill Lynch or Enron, or you know, a, a company that most of you won't even remember today. Sperry Rand. Uh, we have an office in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, and Sperry Rand was one of the biggest employers. And I had a, a major uh, senior manager come in, and he had all his money in, in Sperry stock. And guess what? All his options were in right. Sperry stock. <laughs> and his four hundred one k was one hundred percent invested in. Sperry stock. <laughs> and the stock went to two. Um, he couldn't retire. And he, it, was, uh, it was horrible. And all he had to do was to diversify that risk. He would have made a lot more money, slept at night, and never have to worry again. So it's, you know, it's almost like if you, if you think you're invested in, and you know, I, I tell you what, if, you're, if you find that you are invested heavily in your company stock, just go look up on um, you know, Yahoo Finance. And look at insider trading, and you're going to find the senior manager of the company are selling their own stock because everybody knows you need to diversify. You can't have all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, and just one last thing you want to ask yourself is, and I said this earlier in the show, you can always afford for that stock to go up and up and up, but it's probably not going to change your lifestyle. If some reason that stock has bad news and gets cut in half, goes down 50%, that could affect your lifestyle negatively way more than it helps you on the upside. It's just not worth the risk. Well, you know, Ryan, you made a great point just a few minutes ago when you talked about, you know, how only 1.3% of the global stock market accounted for most of the return. Is that company stock going to be that one or two companies that are going to make a difference? Is it the next Apple or advanced micro devices or Amazon or Google? Probably not. So, you know, why, you know, why gamble when you can diversify and assure you know, give yourself a much higher probability of success. So, Ryan, let me ask you a question. On a scale of one to 10, in terms of being financially organized, where would you place John and Eric? I mean, John at least is asking when he should take his Social Security. He's a little bit further along the path. So I'm going to give John a hard six. Now he has to take it home and figure out his Social Security benefit in context of his whole plan. Eric, on the other hand, my brother, you, I'll give you a two. You got a lot of work to do, man. You got to diversify that money. You're you're sitting on a financial time bomb. All right. Well, you know that's. Uh, I think they're pretty good ratings. And let me ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to ten, how financially organized are you right now? Matter of fact, when you get home, ask your spouse how financially organized he or she thinks you are. And what do you think Ryan would give you? Would he give you a two, or would he give you a six? Well, why would you want to be a ten? And if you do, here's your opportunity. All you have to do is be one of our next three callers and have saved at least 500000 for retirement because Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal, which will force you to become totally financially organized. And then from there, it's on autopilot. It's a financial GPS, just like you have in your car right now. That'll tell you where you are. It'll map out where you're going. It'll report daily on your progress on your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve those goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid those financial potholes, those dead ends of a typical cookie cutter financial plan that you get on the internet or from your stockbroker. It'll update your net worth daily in real time so you'll always know where you are. More importantly, you'll know where you're going every year for the rest of your financial life. More importantly, we're going to take all those collection of statements. You know, 
We just got the year-end statements. Put them in a shopping bag. Put them in a folder. You don't have to open them up. We'll even open them for you. We're going to take all that complex information and break it down to a simple, easy-to-read spreadsheet, which will tell you, are you fully diversified? Are you being overcharged by your current provider? Are you receiving the income you need to fill that gap once you're in retirement? And most assuredly, if you're retired, your number one goal is to stay there. And that requires dependable, repeatable income. And lastly, Ryan and I are going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive that money or is that money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 45 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next three callers, that's what we have left. With over $500,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our famous Total Financial Master Plan at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's no pain, no gain. Financial Radio, and that's pain spelled P-A-Y-N-E. And Bob and I want to make sure that going into 2020, you have the best advice possible. That's why we put together our latest guide, How to Save on Taxes in 2020. We also give you the rundown of the new SECURE Act. There's a lot of new tax benefits. You can take advantage of it. We give you all the highlights of that. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. We give you a couple different ways to save on taxes. In 2020, we give you all the highlights of the new SECURE Act. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH at 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. And now we have a very, very special guest on the show, Bob's son, my brother, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Mr. Chris Payne in the studio. Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> How are you, Chris? <laughs> you know, Ryan, I'm doing great. And I love the fact that we're videoing this now because now we can play a little game of which pain has the best hair. Wow. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, I think, well, Dad has the best hair. And if you're listening on the radio, you're going to have to go to bebullish.com to see it for real. But, I mean, look at that, Chris. And we're looking through the camera now, but he looks, he looks amazing. Well, now everybody's going to know, camera. Chris. <laughs> everybody's going to know that, well, you know, well, I was born gray and I'm turning prematurely blonde. That's right, and most people don't know that your power is purely derived from your great head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, that all the gray hair on the left came from you, Chris. All the gray hair on the right came from you, Rye, growing up. <laughs> Bob, in economics, they call that an opportunity cost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the lesson. Well, well, this is our spotlight segment. Every week, what we do is we take a real financial plan, we dissect it, and we talk about how we helped a certain client get on their path to financial freedom. Chris, you worked on a case recently. Why don't you break it down for us and just tell us how you helped this couple really fix up their financial situation and get them on the right path. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, really nice couple from down in Florida um, came to us. You know, with love a lot of Florida, the same issues. <laughs> we, we love Florida too. We love you in Florida. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was as warm and sunny here. But, um, you know, we, we they came to us with, you know, just the normal concerns like, you mm-hmm. know, is our portfolio in a good place for us uh, in our in our later years? You know, we're getting older. You know, where do you see us today? You know, are we right on track? And the answer was really simple. You know, from a projection standpoint, you know, they'd never run out of money. You know, everything looked good on the surface, but here's the problem. Okay, you so know, yeah, what is the problem? They had, obviously, they saved a lot. So what's the issue here? Well, the issue is at almost seventy years old, they were taking the same amount of risk ride that you and I would take. Wow. So how much money do they have at risk in the markets? Because that's what we see all the time. It's like, you're ready to retire, you're retired, but you have, like, again, the amount of risk someone made their 20s and 30s has in the market. Exactly. So you know, the reality is they should have been more like 40% at risk. 
they were closer to 70% at risk. So this, if we, we had another recession like uh, 2008, 2009, Chris, what kind of decline would that portfolio experience? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that portfolio would probably would have dropped close to 30%. Wow. Well, and, you know, in dollars, that probably would have been something in the ballpark of close to like a million dollars. And you know, let's face it, at this stage of their life, do they really want to see their portfolio go down and buy a million dollars and ride that out? That just sounds like a buzzkill from where I come from. Yeah, and completely unnecessary, too. Well, how do people react? I mean, I see a lot of a lot of you today, you know, we, we're very brave now. We've been in a bull market for 10, almost 11 years. And it's like, well, why would I want to get out with something that just goes up all the time? And, you know, somehow the memories of these 50% declines are starting to fade, Chris. I mean... How do they feel about knowing they, they could lose a million dollars in any one year? I'll tell you what, it was really scary. When I showed them what it looked like in their projections, they almost had a heart attack. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, I mean, that's the thing, too. It's a good point, is you don't know the risk in your portfolio until it's too late. You're not going to know when the market's going up. But when you get that downturn in the market, all of a sudden, you see your portfolio go down by a huge value, like a million dollars. It's like, up oh, too late now. And the nice thing is we have tools where we can tell you with a lot of accuracy, what is your portfolio really going to do in a down market? And that's the key. Exactly. You know, and the crazy thing was when they came in, I said, you know, did you have any idea that you were taking this much risk? And the answer absolutely shocked me. They said, yes, we knew exactly how much risk we're taking. We just had no idea about the impact. I said, well, you know, what about your advisor? Didn't your advisor, you know, bring this to your attention? And they said, well, kind of, but, you know, they never really harped on it. Uh, but we really like our advisor. I said, well, that's great. I said, I really like my doctor. But, you know, if my doctor told me that I had cancer and said, don't worry about it, I'd fire that person immediately, despite how much I like them. I think that happens a lot. I think there's a, there are very few true financial planners out there, uh, but there's a lot of investment product salesmen. And that's what happens. You end up with a collection of investments. And in a bull market, everybody thinks everything's fine because, you know, like Ryan says, almost every week, you don't know who's swimming naked until the tide goes out. Yeah, and I'm looking at the portfolio, and you analyze all the fees. I mean, they certainly were paying fees, this advisor, to give them advice. Um, and the advisor was certainly taking the fees, but there was no financial planning done. And to me, it's like, if I'm going to pay a fee, great, but give me the advice that goes along with that fee. And so many times we see that just doesn't happen. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the other thing on top of it is that you know, the portfolio wasn't even particularly tax efficient. So they're playing a lot of unnecessary taxes when they don't have to, just based on the type of investments they have. Um, you know, the, they, they had all investments for a long period of time. So, you know, when they do sell, they are going to have to pay some taxes, but it's going to be nothing in comparison to if the market pulls back 40, 50 percent. Right. It's so, right. Of, right. Sorry. so Chris, you're telling me that the only reason on mutual funds is to help the government out with its deficit. So we should thank them for their service. <laughs> exactly right, Bob. Uh, well, that's the thing, too. You don't want to let the uh, the tail, thank you, uh, wag the, the, the dog. Um, this is a great example of that. It's right, right. Sometimes it's better rip the Band-Aid off and put some protection in place because those taxes are a lot less than a big downturn in the market, and that's the kind of things you have to weigh out. And I don't think taxes are going down in the future. So what, we have, a, we have a, a tiger by the tail here, so we might as well take the opportunity, especially when we've got a great up market. You know, and the best part about this whole thing is that if we just make a couple of adjustments in their portfolio, you know, not only are they going to save money on taxes, but – they're also going to increase the amount of income they're getting. And as I always say, you get a better outcome with more income. Yes, income is way more reliable yeah. than the ups and downs of the market. Uh, another financial masterpiece, as Bob likes to say. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to talk to the pain boys. We're all on the phone right now. Um, <laughs> and we have a couple slots left. We actually have two slots left. If you give us a call or text right now, uh, myself, Chris Payne, Bob Payne will run for your total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. All you need to do is bring those statements in, bring them in from December, bring them in the office. We're going to take all the data from all those different statements, and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life, and then we can start looking at all the critical components just like this. Uh, are you paying unnecessary fees to an advisor that's not giving you advice? We're going to show you where all the hidden cost is in your portfolio, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. You don't know the risk in your portfolio until it's too late. You need to know exactly what the risk is right now. We're going to show you exactly what pitfalls, unseen risk you have in your portfolio to protect yourself against the next downturn in the market. And lastly, we're going to look at income and taxes. Income is so much more reliable in the ups and downs of the market. How can we increase or optimize the income on your portfolio 
and optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket, less money in the government's pocket. Then we're going to tie it all together into our famous total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. You know, call us right now. You know, if we're all paying right now, there's get rid of that suffering. Be one of our next two callers and we'll create for you your own total financial master plan. Just simply call or text 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can simply just call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next two callers, you've saved over half a million dollars for retirement. Rye, Chris, and Bob will create for you your own total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, no strings attached, no plan. Let's call or text 844-752-6692. 6692 that's 844-752-6692 or simply call 844 plan nyc simply 844 p l a n n y c well that was a fantastic no pain all pain gain uh, radio show this morning chris as always brother great to have you on the show right it's always a pleasure to be here and you know and i'm so glad we answered the uh, old time question of which pain has the best hair and it clearly <laughs> bob is the winner dad we all bow to you <laughs> Oh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. <laughs> Bob, he can't hear you anymore. He's he's already in the jacuzzi for the rest of the day, so he's uh, he's already long gone. Uh, from your lips to God's ears, son. <laughs> well, have a great weekend, and as always, be bullish. Mm-hmm.